Welcome everybody, thank you for tuning in for another review from our 2022 EMTV shootout. We are working our way through the Enduro category and today we will be reviewing the Yeti 160E T1. I've got Robert, Nick, and Ryan with me today. They were some of the eight testers we had here in Knoxville, Tennessee, reviewing these bikes. And before we get into our different opinions and ride impressions aboard the bike, I'm gonna go through some of the spec and geometry to get you a little more familiarized with Yeti's E Enduro race bike. So this is the T1 build. It retails for $13,000. It has a Fox 38 factory 170 millimeter fork. Controlling the 160 mil of travel out back is a Fox Float X2 factory shock. This bike comes with a Shimano XT 12 speed drivetrain, but the rear derailleur broke, Nick's fault. Uh, so we replaced it with something else that he had lying around. Uh, brake spec comes in the form of SRAM's Code RSCs with a 220 up front, 200 in the back. DT Swiss EX 1700 wheels, um, 29 front and rear, 170 mil axis dropper post, 165 cranks, Shimano EP8 drive unit with a Shimano 630 watt hour battery. Moving into the geometry, this bike is pretty capable all around. It has a 480 millimeter reach in the size large, 625 stack height, 446 millimeter chainstay length with 1,262 mil wheelbase. There's a 27 mil bottom bracket drop. The head tube angle sits at 64.5 degrees with a 78 degree seat tube angle. Pick, pick a topic. Climbing, descending, geometry? Yes, climbing. Okay. Yeah. Next favorite. Yeah. Uh, so, man, this, this bike is meant for going fast and it's quite harsh no matter what flip chip setting you have it in and no matter really where the shock is, uh, how high of compression or low of uh, PSI you put in the shock. So it, it is fairly harsh on the climbs, but for some of that harshness, it rewards you in very efficient climbing. It has a very stable uh, platform and I feel like you can mash on the pedals as hard as you want and not lose a lot of traction. Okay, and for the record, uh, many of these bikes we had and have been riding long before we, we did our, you know, 10 test phase in Tennessee. Nick actually took this bike to the Trans Cascadia uh, stage race and put a couple hundred? 150 miles on okay. it at least. In a weekend, so yeah. uh, Nick's definitely got a lot of time aboard this bike up and down as do the rest of us. So. Um, I know Cole was a, a guy who, when he first got on this bike in the bike park, was like, dude, this might be my favorite. Like, I love it. It is so rad, so fast. And then I remember the first climb he went up, he was just like, oh my gosh, like, what just happened? Like, this thing got so stiff. It was so uncomfortable for him. And he started having to do some changes on the suspension tune. Robert, you're shaking your head. Yeah, it's definitely a stiff bike, um, whether you're descending or climbing on it, but I think that almost almost works in its favor if you're racing it or if you're just trying to go fast, both up and down the hill, because you do have that platform to work off of to, uh, to generate speed. And uh, it makes you a little bit more considerate of your line choices, I think. So overall, I, I think the, the stiffness works in its favor for a lot of the time. Okay, you're, obviously, you're the heaviest in our test bunch, right? Yeah. What's your weight? 200 pounds. Okay. And um, you like riding hard, you like riding fast, so it wasn't, you didn't feel any discomfort on the climb or any stiff, you felt the stiffness, but it wasn't a problem for you. It wasn't a problem. I think maybe if you were on a real long day out in the saddle on real ro rocky, chunky terrain, maybe you'd start to, uh, to hate it, but I think for the riding we've been doing, the kind of mid-length days, that efficiency is actually a benefit in my, my eyes. Okay. Would you go so far as to say this is maybe kind of focus a little bit more for like a race bike or someone who has that kind of mental application of wanting to go fast and ride hard? Yeah, for sure. It, it's not your everyday kind of comfortable cruisy bike. It's something you do need to push a little bit and okay. want to give it some go. But when you do do that, it's high yeah. on your list. Yeah. Oh, it puts a smile on your face for sure. Okay. Frenchy? On, on the, on the, going back to the climbing, you know, I'm 40 pounds lighter than you. I'm at 160. So 
just going up the trail, I just felt like I, I was hitting, I felt every rock. A lot of chatter and my, my arms got tired. And even some of those flatter rock clusters, I was getting hung up, front and rear. I was getting a little hung up. Um, I just didn't enjoy going up. I just, I felt every rock and it just, it, if you're the slightest hungover, you do not want to be on those bikes <laughs> <laughs> at all. Are you a little hungover today? Uh, no, feeling pretty good. Good, good day. Feeling pretty covered? good. The other day it was a little rough. <laughs> okay. But when you're not hungover, and when like it, when we were in Wind Rock, so when we were at Park, Wind Rock, and we were we were we were going down all the trails at race pace, thing felt amazing. Yeah. I remember you would pull up to some of the regroup points, and you would be like, "Whoa, smile big day." Yeah, I mean, at race pace, I mean, uh, as fast as you can, this thing, this thing will take you down full support it is a yeah. fun bike to ride but the next day when we started climbing <laughs> oh I, I thought you were gonna say drinking <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't want anything to do with it okay but i think that like you're talking about the support like it gives you as much as you put into it like it can yeah. handle as hard as you want to push yeah and ha handle the biggest terrain that you could put this kind of bike into i just feel like it's way too specific for, for me as an in, overall bike. in my in my opinion okay. yeah um, so you're thinking if you were going to be buying an e-bike you don't want to have to ride it the one way it likes to be ridden right all yeah. the time and it, robert what about you I, so i think maybe the stiffness lends itself well to coming down a category for your everyday so whereas you maybe want an enduro bike uh, for the, the kind of day-to-day, -day, like real rough stuff, but you also need a trail bike for the m more mellow days. I think this almost, uh, the efficiency, the, the stiffness of the platform makes it feel like it's down the category. Okay. If you're not pushing it hard, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I can see that. So yeah, almost like, for- uh, When I was riding some of the not so high speed sections, uh, this bike, it kind of feels dead a little bit until you really start to push on it. It, it just, it's not really inspiring at just, a, a leisurely pace. Okay. It's like riding a supercross bike on the trails. That's a perfect yeah. way to say it. And I do wonder, you know, there are some suspension platforms that uh, I think we've all experienced where a little additional rider weight could make a difference between a, a little bit rougher experience and a little better experience. And I think it's, it is worth noting that something that Yeti has done, which, you know, some other brands have done, which is cool, is that they've got those chips or that, that chip I guess, mm -hmm. which you can flip and it will change it. We have exclusively run the bike in the plush and poppy setting, which, um, you know, after I brought the bike home from the Yeti Media Camp was the setting I found to be most comfortable. Um, you know, I'm about 175 pounds. Um, and that was the one that I felt wasn't as harsh off the top or stiff, mm -hmm. um, but still gave me the progression and, and firmness and platform I wanted. So. If you guys had to give the Yeti 160E a, a score, let's just say like one through 10, Robert, what would you give? Definitely think it's a solid eight and a half, nine, just because of how hard it makes you want to push and uh, how fast you end up going. Okay, Nick? Yeah, I would give this one a nine. Really? Yeah, it just gives you so much back, everything you want to put into it, uh, and a few downsides on the climb, maybe a little bit harsh, but man, it's efficient, it's fast, and it really rewards you if you want to push into it. <sighs> I'm thinking I'm more <laughs> like six and a half, seven. I just, uh, I had a hard time vibing with the thing. I just, I, you know, as an everyday rider, can't see myself buying that bike, okay. being on that bike. Let's see what I wrote here on my, I put an eight. Yeah. If I was going out with an intended application, right? Like if I'm going out and it's a race weekend or if the trails are right, I, I definitely started to feel nervous aboard this bike on the very, very steep stuff we were riding. Um, I thought, you know, maybe the slightly long reach, maybe that low, bar and the stack height obviously you know we've got a little bit more room for spacers but i just i felt like it had a very intended tra uh, trail type and condition and speed and it, like you said frenchy for me rough and fast for for what i regularly find myself doing at different speeds and mental you know capacities for the day like <laughs> i don't always want to have to be on and sprinting and working hard sometimes i just want to go out and have fun and yeah, play know, around some miles, yeah. whatever. Yeah, and yeah. I think this bike is pretty purpose built, which is fine because I think, you know, like Robert said, if, if you are a guy that's looking for an e-bike to race, to 
to charge hard to go fast, this is a really, really good option. And I think maybe for the guys that just want to cruise around or you know maybe aren't 185, 190 and up, might be a little abusive for them. So, all right, well, that is the Yeti 160E. Hopefully that helped you guys out a little bit with some input and information from our test session and the many months of riding this bike before we got here to Knoxville. So please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We have all of our individual bike reviews coming out in build up to our grand finale, which will be coming out very soon. I don't think you'll want to miss it. Thank you all very much for watching. Hopefully we'll see you out on the trails.